up out of nowhere. I lost sight of them. They're going to land over there. Yeah, they're burning. Uh, they land like right over there. Okay, so this is delayed about 15 seconds. Where? 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 Oh, I see him. You see it? Yeah, right there. Like straight, you can see a line starting. They're like yeah. dropping. Oh, yeah. beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast And we've, I think we've got to get on that with AI front of Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Um... I mean, I hope we are out there on uh, Mars and maybe beyond Mars, the moons of Jupiter. Um, I hope we're, we're, ex we're traveling frequently throughout the solar system. He opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Perhaps preparing for missions to nearby star systems. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Um, I think all of this is possible within 50 years. Um, and I think that will be very exciting. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, I believe that it's important for the future to be a space-faring civilization um, and out there, ultimately be out there among the stars. And I think that's the, that's the exciting, inspiring future that... In this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and the mouth speaking great things. So I'm sitting here in the... <laughs> sitting here in the pilot seat. I pull it down. The... Um, Probably, and the most significant thing is being able to land and 
an, an orbit class rocket uh, Bruce stage um, and, uh, and bring it both back to Cape Canaveral, uh, land on land, and be able to land on a drone ship out in the ocean. How have you done this? Th these projects are so... These PayPal, SolarCity, Tesla, SpaceX, they're so spectacularly different. They're such ambitious projects at scale. How on earth has one person been able to innovate in this way? What is it about you? And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Um, I don't know, actually. I, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I work a lot. I mean, that's, and a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's, there's been a lot of conversation here about yeah, that. Sure. Um, and yet, and you've staked out a slightly different position. So can you talk about that? Well, I mean, I think my sort of full position would re require quite a long explanation. Um, I mean, I, I am concerned about um, certain directions that AI could take that would be uh, not good for the future. That the, I mean, it, it, I think it would be fair to say that like, not all AI futures are benign. Not, not all. Okay. Um, and, and so if you have something, if, if, this, if we create some digital superintelligence that exceeds us in every way by a lot, um, it's very important that that be benign. Um, and, um, and so actually with, with, the, with a few others, um, I created uh, OpenAI, uh, which is uh, an AI, uh, it's a non-profit actually, it's, 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 there's no, I, I think the governance structure here is important. Um, I think the, um, I, I, think, I, think it, I think it's to essentially, I think one of the solutions, the solution that, that seems maybe the best one is to have an AI layer um, if you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex, um, that um, could work work well and symbiotically with with you. I mean, just as your cortex works symbi symbiotically with your limbic system, your di sort of a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest. This is something that's in, in surgically inserted or bred so, into the species, or what? The, the fundamental limitation is input output. So. Uh, we, we already have, uh, we, we're already a cyborg. Um, it's just that, I mean, you have a digital version of yourself or, or partial version of yourself online in the form of your emails and your social media and all the things that you do. Um, and, and you have basically superpowers in, in that, with your computer and your phone and, and the applications that are there. Um, you have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. So you can answer any question, uh, you can video conference with anyone um, right. anywhere, you can send a message to millions of people instantly. Um, you know, you just do incredible things, and um, but the constraint is is input out output. So we're, we're I/O bound, um, particularly output bound. I mean, like the your output level is so low. It's like particularly on a phone, like your two thumbs just sort of tapping away. Um, this is ridiculously slow. Um, our input is much better because we have a high bandwidth visual interface for the brain. Like our, our eyes take in a lot of a lot of data. Um, so there's many orders of magnitude difference between um, input and output. Um, so mostly, um, effectively merging in a symbiotic way with uh, digital intelligence revolves around eliminating the I/O constraint. Um, so it's it'd be some sort of direct cortical interface. Um, and you called it a neural lace. Neur neural lace. Yeah. Um, it's totally not Google Glass, right? No, I, I'm talking about no, something which... No, but would you wear it? Or? No, I mean, it would be... Uh, I, mean, it, I mean, there are a few ways to approach this, but some sort of interface directly with your cortical neurons, particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries, because that, that provides a, a complete uh, roadway to um, all of your neurons. The neurons are very heavy users of energy, so they need high blood flow. So you automatically, with your veins and arteries, have um, a road network to your neurons. Still and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So it's some kind of surgery, right? Um, yes, but you could insert something, you know, basically, you know, in, 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 into the jugular and have... <laughs> It gets macabre, but it sounds I mean, really easy and it, it doesn't involve pop, it doesn't it doesn't involve you know like 
shopping or just get your skull off or anything like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And plus you're not a house cat anymore, right? Not a house cat. So, right. um, I mean, essentially, if, if we can figure out how to establish a high bandwidth neural interface. Thank you.